So um, we're going to do a long chair, but um, if you need to trace uh, a drawing, control space bar, I'll go to the left, and you can bring an item called a backdrop item. Um, it could be also a video uh, at clip, load image, and I've downloaded one on the desktop here. So you might not see because we might be in the wrong view. Here we go. It was in the front. So backdrop is here. You could change the view that you need. As you see it's the front. And sometimes I put transparency at 80. So I can trace, but I can still see what's on the back. Then you would do a new layer and start tracing it. Uh, things like this. So that's a backdrop item. Uh, something that I use myself quite a bit uh, is curve. I don't really model with them because I found them quite buggy when you extrude them. Uh, I would love Modo to fix this because it could be very useful. You could use easily Illustrator curve or Rhino curve, but even in Modo when you extrude there's still something that, or maybe I'm doing it wrong, but I couldn't figure out. So I do love this curve, the B spline. It's very similar to the SolidWorks one or oh, even Rhino actually, but SolidWorks has exactly the same one. Um, but I just use it for um, for sketching actually. I drop a few points like this. Um, it's very easy to model with it. Make sure you click on the right point. And when you're happy with it, I draw on top. So I don't keep it, but I just use it for a sketch. So I go Q. Uh, I usually rename this curve because at the end I'll hide it or I'll get rid of it. I do a new layer, N, and then I use the pen tool. And here is a little trick that I love. It's the both side wall mode. This is kind of made for a floor plan, things like this. Often you have to make this bit larger. Depends how big you draw that curve. And you see it gives you a quad. I really, really like this. But I like first to draw a curve. Uh, freehand drawing with this, it's doable, but I prefer the other way. Don't put too many. I don't even think I need this one. Uh, so I could actually undo. Come back here. No, I don't think I need this. Yeah, keep it as low res as you can. Voila. You can go back, tweak things like this. And when you're happy, Q. Then we could actually delete the curve. So it was just uh, a helping hand. Um, shift A, here it is, uh, thicken. Uh, you need to select this to see the tool, click here. The only drawback with this method is that you're off center. So there's many way, but here I don't need symmetry, so I'll just eyeball it. To reset, you go edit, uh, center to bounding box center. But there's a way of getting it that center. I'll show you that later. Um, good. Now I need, as you know, if I go tab, it's not exactly what I need. So edge, add loop. Uh, this I learned, uh, fin, this shape is from Andy Brown. I just made it in a different way. I think this way is easier, but I'm not taking credit for this. Um, Q. And uh, here we go. Q here without both sides to keep that edge. And Shift Q here. We're almost done. Now what I need is some at uh, the center. Uh, close to the edge somewhere here. Q. Perfect. So if we go Tab, we already have a pretty good uh, shape. Uh, we can go on the surface and add more subdivision, especially for the rendering. I'm on a laptop, so I cannot do it with the keyboard here. It's a bit thick. Um, here is a trick. If it was too thick here, you cannot scale. But what you can do, I don't think I've shown that tool. There's a great tool called Push. And if you click and drag, it'll push from the normal. So it would really, if the best is to use the arrow, it would really look at the polygon themselves. Um, 
and uh, that's about it if you want a floor we can go cube like this uh, in polygon scale it huge like much bigger Q select the polygon delete oops wrong key delete uh, we don't see them because they are facing the wrong way in polygon press F to flip them edge bevel to uh, bevel that edge and that's how you can quickly do a backdrop put more rounding and that's basically it um, it's just too small whoops wrong key can select this in uh, object mode in five item mode shift a still floating a little bit um, we could use an ortho view to really see and uh, rotate uh, this is completely up to you but you could um, change this you go right click change type to area light um, and uh, instead of deleting this and getting a new one, thanks to uh, Will Vaughn, I just I forgot the change type and I just saw one of his videos where he does it this way. Because uh, same here, I'm big on area light. I'm not a huge fan of uh, directional light. They could be useful for some stuff. but um, And um, shading on environment. So we could bring an environment, but you could also... Uh, use the gray uh, I'll go F8 see a preview and the gray is here we could fine tune its intensity sometime in furniture I use pure white from everywhere here I won't do a big difference and sometime if I do a quick glass I'll use the physical uh, now the, the sun is shining the other way so you would have to rotate the whole backdrop and the chair if you were to use this um, but I'll stay with this one. Uh, the only thing is I might tune it down. I'm going to hide it. Maybe 0.8 and maybe the area light, same thing. Uh, tune it down at a hair. Maybe 2.8, something like this. And uh, to apply a material, select your object, M, name it, chair. You could do the same for the backdrop. M, name it, floor. Remember to name it. If you don't, uh, you might share the same thing with many objects, multiple objects. Uh, F6, if you're on the cloud, remember you right click and you go load. It'll take a few seconds to download it. Um, but here locally we should be fine. Here we go. And uh, we could try this. Uh, the green here comes from here. Look, if you go shading, you click here, it'll show you which one is being used. Uh, and we can go under the material trends. You see there's a little bit of green here in this channel. And like in real life, there's absorption of light. So this is good, actually. I think every glass should have this. And every glass usually should even have subsurface. Um, unless the glass is machined. But that's how you go higher. That's how you tune it down a little bit. Uh, maybe much higher. Remember to put MM. And for the final, uh, find an angle you like. You could change the lens of the camera too a little bit. Uh, camera and the lens is here. So maybe you could go 40 mil. So it's a bit of a wider lens. That's actually a bit too much here, 45. Yeah, that's better. Uh, still a hair too much, I think. Um, we can, uh, I'll show in a different video how to do depth of fill but we can actually uh, uh, do some depth of field. Um, and I'm just going to show you now. I don't want to confuse you. Um, if you do render a high res, this is where you do it. So in print, we go here. 300 is a bit too high. 220 is way enough. And if you go high res, or if you get noise, or both, go in settings, 
The most common noise I found with Monte Carlo rendering, the type of uh, render mode is using, first of all, if you get some black on the edge of the glass, usually it's, you don't have enough ray depth, so maybe 12 or 16 on both. If you really get global noise, it's usually shedding rate, I'll go down to 0 0.3, 0 0.1. If you go big poster, you need more anteliasin, 16 or 32, especially if you get very, very thin line, not too much here. But the common thing is reflection sample for sure. So maybe 256, 512, 1000. I go up sometimes to 8000, but go slow. Uh, if we do have refraction here, so you need it here too. If I had subsurface and I shoot on glass, you would put it here. But the two main one usually is this guy and the uh, sample of the light. Because I'm on my, a laptop, I'm not going 512. Um, especially my laptop, super slow. Uh, F9 to see the final. I don't know why it's not working. And it would render. And remember, after you can do a vignette, put 250 or 400 to darken the edges, and a bloom to make things glow. And the blooms, you go backward. If you go 80% or 60%, you'll get more bloom. Uh, I just cannot wait. It's going to be too slow to render. Uh, that's what happened when you got four core. And remember, not in this, but in the preview, if you move the mouse, it will render where the mouse moved. 